What started off as a coach-player relationship turned into a fast friendship and partnership between two Bruin alumni. Terry O'Reilly and Dave Jensen share a passion for giving back to the community. One of their missions is to continue to serve those who served our country. Here's O'Reilly over the line, bearing in, going in, and scores! A miraculous goal by Terry O'Reilly! If you're a hockey fan, then you know the name Terry O'Reilly is synonymous with the Boston Bruins. 13 years in the NHL, all in a black and gold uniform. Three additional seasons as a head coach for the Bees. Long gone from the limelight, Taz, as he is known, has remained active here in New England. As a former Olympian and NHLer, Dave Jensen, who along with O'Reilly are spending their time together these days, giving back. Local veterans and inner city youngsters are on the receiving end. We're talking about a little bit of hockey first. First, let's go over your hockey career. As uh, Taz, let's start with you. 13 legendary years, I will say. Um, is it hard for you to kind of sum up like you, your biggest accomplishment in a Bruins uniform? Well, well, just we're limiting it to the Bruins because uh, I won an MVP trophy with St. Gertrude's. You did? Uh, yeah, as a, as a goalie. You did? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the highlight of my Jeez, hockey I didn't career. find that yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. St. Gertrude's? Well, I thank have, goodness for St. Gertrude's. I will email you a photograph of the trophy. <laughs> Please do. But no, it was a wonderful ride with the Bruins, 13 years, and then three years coaching. Uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to coach Dave. Yep. That was one of the biggest challenges of my life. <laughs> You're not the first coach to say that, or the last. No, it was a, a wonderful original six team, mm -hmm. great organization, and uh, it was an honor to play for them. Mm -hmm. And Dave, you kind of uh, went from a couple different teams, you played for a couple different franchises. Uh, just talk about your years and, the, and what you thought your yeah, experience was I, like. I mean, the experience was great. I played for, I uh, was drafted by Hartford, Washington, and Boston's organization, and uh, played in the Olympic team in 84. Tremendous experience, and the thing that the thing that you cherish most is relationships yeah. with the guys and what you take out of it. You know, you don't really remember the goals and assists so much, especially if you scored as few as I did. But you remember the relationships, if you know what I mean. What about the view of the game today as opposed to when you guys played? Uh, how different? I mean, there probably wouldn't even be a role for you now, right? There's <laughs> that's not. Wow. Like that's, are you kidding like, me? No, like what he does. No, what no. he did was score. No, 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 he scored two, but yeah. I mean the fighting part of it. Like that's just not was, part you know, of it anymore. Anyway. I know he's, he's a scoring. Yeah. If I had feelings, they'd be hurt right now. <laughs> <laughs> that totally came out yeah, really no, my, my, I love it though. My best year, I had I had a couple hundred minutes in penalties as a sidebar, yeah. and I had 90 points. So I, I, I right. believed in a balanced game. We had 11 20 goal scorers, and uh, I was one of them. Peter McNabb had the most with 30, 30 no, he had 41 or 42 goals. I had uh, 29, and, and it went down. Bobby Miller was the last one. He scored his 20th goal, I think, on the last oh, no. game of the season in Toronto. Was there a lot of pressure for him to get oh, that goal? <laughs> we were, we, we wouldn't let him come off the ice. Oh, no. You know, he was out in the ice. He's, he's running out of gas. He'd come to the bench, stay out there. We changed the line mates right. and kept feeding him the puck. And he, yeah. he finally, uh, it was at the end of the game, Toronto had pulled their goalie. So he had an empty net. What about your, uh, your skating? And well, I was, uh, if I had feelings, it'd be hurt too. <laughs> I was probably, I was on a milk carton. More than <laughs> Somebody, as Taz would say, right? Taz would say, yeah. 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 Uh, unfortunately, uh, my career, I had a uh, reconstructive knee surgery my first year, and you know, you're never the same player after that. And right. I played eight years of pro hockey, and, and you know, we I was can in show and the out. Scars. We can yeah, show there's, the scars. there's quite a few scars there, but unfortunately, um, you know, it, uh, I spent a lot of time, you know, rehabbing from surgeries and then. Heading to the HL or rehab there or whatnot, and it was a it was a struggle. So you can tell us because nobody will hear this, Dave. But how was Taz as a coach? Well, ta well, it was very short because I got I had a shoulder surgery at the beginning right. of the year, but he was excellent. I had more respect growing up watching Terry O'Reilly. You know, I don't think I've ever tried so hard in my life, or <laughs> tried to block shots, or oh, so or. <laughs> 
or um, he was the best. He was the he best was coach. The best. Scotty he? Bowman had nothing on this guy, right? <laughs> more, more, more. <laughs> but how was that transition for you, Taz? I mean, going from you know playing with the guys and then coaching them. I mean, it, that's got to make a little bit of challenging because now you're the head guy. It was very challenging because I didn't know anything about coaching, so that was the biggest uh, roadblock. But uh, the smartest thing I did, uh, I had an interview with Johnny Cunniff and hired him as my assistant. And shortly after I hired him, I said, you're not my assistant, we're co-coaches. You know, because <laughs> yeah. he knew the game, he knew the science of the game, you know, uh, all, all the different practice drills, power play, penalty killing, and face-off uh, tricks. And, 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 and my strength was discipline, keeping right. the guys on, on page on, and, and uh, committing to what, what the team's program was. Uh, it, it, we, it was a good combination and we had some successful years. Just, you know, it was a good experience for me, I'll tell you. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Terry and Dave are playing a much different role outside of hockey these days. We'll talk about that after the break as Outside the Fame continues. Outside the Fame is brought to you by CNA Stores, a veteran-owned business. All right, well, now we're going to get to the reason, actually, why we're really here with the two of these unbelievable gentlemen. It's because you both, you teamed up, and you really have a way about you feeling about giving back. And I feel like that's really the bond between you two, that you, you share the same passion for wanting to give back to your community. And um, today, we were able to serve to veterans over at VNOC. I mean, first of all, I just want you to talk about that experience. What was that like? I mean, there's a lot of stories over there, a lot of guys admiring you, but on the other side, you were probably admiring as what they did. For me, it's, it's just such an honor for me to be able to serve them or to try to you know, make a positive difference for them because honestly, without them, we might be speaking a different language today with no freedom. You know, so I get the utmost respect for all veterans, every veteran. What, what struck me was, I mean, because we, we went in there with a lot of admiration for all these veterans, and we were standing at the counter handing out a bag of food goods and, and a bag of uh, bread and buns. And I would say 75% of them that came through wanted to talk hockey. They, they, yeah. they were Bruins fans. Yeah. I was admiring or respecting them for what they had done and they wanted to talk hockey. So it was, it was kind of a neat afternoon. You guys are involved in a bunch of different projects. So Dave, maybe you should kind of just shed some light on some other things that you guys are involved with as well. Well, some of the things that what Terry and I um, are looking to do, we own a lot of property up in the um, northwestern part of the state. And um, you know, one of our passions is the use of the land. Taz and I have been talking about veteran housing, the best use for our property. If there's a way we can give back and create veteran housing for employment, you know, education, uh, for careers for these guys, and also for disabled vets, for rehabilitation, and you know, that's what we'd like to do. And we're talking now about developing a housing project in Winchington, uh, and, and uh, it'll be in conjunction with uh, job opportunities in that area. So it'll be uh, providing a place to live and a place to work. Right. And uh, so. What, what's better than that? You know, you're going to provide a, a career for these guys with great pay, benefits. Yeah. And it's going to create over 100 jobs. You know? And it, and it kind of gets yeah. them out there doing stuff too, so yeah. they don't have to yeah. focus on what they had been right. through in their lives, right. you know? And now they got lives, different lives. And there are different stages of, um, you know, veterans, right? We have the ones that are recently retired, yeah. and you know, there's a program called the Veteran Advancement Program which we talked about the education, for higher education for, their, for themselves and their spouse. It's um, housing for their families, but it gives them careers or a trade, you know, a, a trade certification. So again, you know, like you said, so those veterans, you teach them, like you said, how to fish, give them careers for the rest of their life. But you also have veterans that are older, you know, Vietnam type vets that are in retirement age that do need, you know what I mean, for you to supply, supply housing for them and rehabilitation because they have disabilities. So, yeah. again, I mean... It's I mean, a, you got to imagine it's tough to make that transition coming back from the war and then trying to find employment and trying to find housing and all that. I mean, where do you, where do you go? And, then, and when you have a nice place to go to with people who are yeah. supporting you, then... Right. And you're all in the same situation. So, 100%. Yeah. 
you guys also participate in the, the youth street hockey programs yeah. where, so, you know, you, it's funny, you got the veterans on one end, which we're yeah. kind of supporting today, and then you, you get them when they're young, too, to try to make them go off and have the right pathway in life. I mean, what's that experience of like with the little kids compared our, to like what we had today? Generations and, you know, some of the social causes, we do street hockey clinics in the inner city to introduce kids to the game and talk about life experience and making a positive difference. And then we do anti-bullying programs in the middle schools, you know, high schools, park and recs. There's fear involved. If you, if there's a bully picking on somebody, there's a tendency at a young age to just stand back and hope he doesn't zero in on me right. instead of speaking up. Mm -hmm. The danger of speaking up is you become a target. Right. And that's what you have to talk to the kids about and convince them that they all have the courage to, to take that step. Our conversation with Terry O'Reilly and Dave Jensen continues when Outside the Fame returns. All right, I'm here with Rob DeFazio, the CEO of CNA Stores. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Uh, just first, I want to just talk about uh, the store itself, CNA Stores, and how successful it's been, and how you actually developed into this program. Um, it kind of started with my, my son, actually. Um, he came to me one day, at, I used to be in the data center industry, and he came to me one day and said that, uh, hey, Dad, Cannabis is now legal in Massachusetts. It's going to be a big market. Let's get into that like you did in data centers mm -hmm. uh, in the early stages. And I said, all right, I'll take a look at it. And sure enough, uh, I said, yeah, let's do it. What makes your stores, I think, so special? I mean, there's definitely a lot of um, pot stores out there because you're right, as you said, it's legal. But it's the way you run your business because you're all about giving back to the community as well. We're veteran backed, so we're, we, we you know, we've, we hire as many veterans as we can. That's one of our uh, priorities. We, we've mandated that we're, we're going to staff our uh, business with 50% veterans. And finally, my question is that uh, speaking of people who give back, you're a company, you ha you've, you've built a relationship with Terry O'Reilly and Dave Jensen. Just yeah. kind of tell us how that formed and where you guys are going with that. So they have 140 acres up in Winchington. We struck a deal with them and they're going to help us, um, they're giving us 20 acres to do a cultivation site out there, and in turn, Dave, myself, and Terry are going to try and develop the rest of the acreage for veteran housing. That's amazing. So my thought process is that would help not only give veterans a place to live, but with my cultivation site, I can actually give them jobs. So also you guys are also involved, we talked a little bit about it before, the Bruins alumni. Um, and that also gives back to a ton of different charities too. I mean, what's it like to kind of get all players of different um, eras as well, all hanging out together? I mean, I, I can tell there's yeah. probably a lot of shenanigans going on. <laughs> Taz can talk yeah. a lot more about, about it from the yeah. no. No. We, <laughs> we enjoy the different generations. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I started with the Bruins in 71 when they won their last cup I was with the farm system mm -hmm. so I traveled with them when they beat the New York Rangers in, uh, in at uh, Madison Square Garden for for the Stanley Cup and then players came and went and I went through my career uh, went through three years of coaching and met all kinds of players along the way well a lot of them now play for the alumni team and it it's nice to maintain that camaraderie and get together and tell old stories and mm -hmm. it, it really is and and each game that we play is for a different cause yep. you know uh, we we basically give them the recipe here how, this is how you take the program sell the program in your community to raise money for your charity uh, tickets at the door to raise money for your charity we'll provide some raffle or auction items for your charity and it's uh, we just travel around New England doing games like that. We have a lot of fun. It's a win-win situation. Yeah, and it's all friendly too, right? No fighting and the Bruins oh, alumni. I mean, we haven't seen any. Have we? Not in a long time. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. No time. hotheads yeah. in that one, right? Yeah. You just it's all for no. fun. It's no. just, you know, when we it's talk about our next surgeries, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not done yet. Outside the Fame with Terry O'Reilly and Dave Jensen continues in a moment. For me, he's the ultimate Bruin. 
what a Bruin stands for in all different uh, phases. He's the guy. I mean, he's the hardest working guy I've ever played with. Uh, he's the best coach I've ever had. He's an important guy in terms of my success and uh, helped me in terms of what a Bruin was supposed to be all about. High praises from Hall of Famer and former teammate Raymond Bork. Now, a lot of people know about you that you are, uh, I'm not going to say an instigator, but you ferociously uh, defended your teammates. Is that a good way of putting it? Yeah, that's not instigating. <laughs> I said not. I said not instigating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you protected your play. You would protect somebody like Dave if he was on your team, for sure. Well, and he well would, maybe not me, but someone <laughs> he would protect better you. than me. Yeah. Who's the... What's the best person you remember fighting? You mean the toughest? The toughest, the... yeah. Like you, you. I, I saw. I read like you were taking like guys who were considered the toughest, and then you would take them down. Well, I don't know if I'd take them down. We had some good scraps, yeah. but. Toe to toe now. Gillies right. O'Reilly's left. Riley down again. Back up. Clark Gillies with the Islanders was probably the biggest, strongest, and best fighter, but. Other than that, I didn't have trouble with it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just those hurdles, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Once I got back by Once that, you that part it was, of it, yeah. yeah. No, but he was—he uh, didn't like fighting. He, you know, no, he, didn't. he was he was kind of pushed into that role because of his size and strength, and uh, so he he wasn't, uh, you know, a, a volunteer at that. But when it came down to the playoff series, we ended up button heads about three times and three or four times. Schultz, I had a lot of fights with. Yes, you did. And yes. I didn't find those difficult because I found it easy not to like him. He was not like him. Well, at the time, I've, I've met him since our, our careers are over, and he's mellowed. He's a really nice guy. But uh, when I met him, I was playing in the American Hockey League for the Bruins farm yeah. team, and he was playing for Richmond, the Philadelphia farm team, and I was sitting on our bench, watching him. He just got on the ice and he had dropped his glove and he was staving, uh, chasing uh, uh, one of our skill players. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he had, it reminded me of uh, uh, the uh, Roadrunner. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Wiley Coyote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He had his arms out like this and he gloves off, chasing him. And uh, Stevie, it was Stevie Sterling, he ended up coaching uh, Babson. Okay, but yep. Stevie didn't even know he was being chased. He, he had the puck, he was going down the ice with the big bad wolf behind him. You can see the wolf behind him, oh, right? Yeah. But he and, and, and one of our guys was coming off, so I grabbed the guy that was going to replace him. I said, I got him. And I went right across and oh intercepted Schultze. And it was the beginning of a long, loving relationship. <laughs> but I think we had 10 fights after that. Rare to play your whole career with one team. So that's pretty cool that you stayed with the Bruins for 13 years. Um, tell us what Boston and the fans mean to you. I mean, being from ca from Canada, and you know, like I had this conversation with Ray a little bit too. And even though he went to Colorado for whatever to win, but he's like Boston's home for me. It's my yeah. like I wonder how you feel as a Canadian coming here. You know, I'm you, you didn't go back. You're here. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. I uh, I was fortunate because uh, we went, we went through some areas of expansion, the NHL expansion. I could have gone in the expansion draft. Uh, there was talk about trades for a while there when I, I had injured my shoulder and my knee so I, my production dropped dramatically and the press was speculating maybe it's time to move them on and you know so I went through periods like that but I'm, I'm glad I stayed in Boston. I did have an opportunity to go to Minnesota but I, I looked at you know like it was a little more money of course uh, I, I would have been going to Minnesota. <laughs> I, Good point. I, I just <laughs> no, I just didn't want, and, yeah. and I was getting near the end of my career, I, I, and my kids were in school. Mm -hmm. and, That's you know, what happened, I, right? it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I stayed. And, and then it was just a, a golden opportunity to coach for a few years. I I enjoyed that. I uh, learned an awful lot about the game and about myself, and, and I'm glad I stayed. Yeah, and I feel like the the, the um, organization appreciated all that, and of course you got your number retired in 2002. Uh, and tell yeah. us about how special was that night for you, getting your number up there? Uh, it was uh, uh, just yeah. an amazing night. I didn't expect it. If you look at the credentials of all the players that had gone before me and the ones that have gone since, I, I don't have those numbers. Who called you and told you that they were going to do that? Harry. 
Oh, he was here. I was going to yeah. say, well, I had to be here. He's I was, here. Yeah. I was, I'd gotten into <laughs> real estate and development, mm -hmm. and I was developing a five-story hotel in Salisbury. It was turning into condominiums, mm -hmm. and I was up on the very roof of the building. Oh, no. I had uh, my nailing apron on with a hydraulic nailing gun, <laughs> and I was, I was putting so yeah, eight, four by eight sheets of plywood down on the floor, and my phone rang, and, I, and it's Harry. And he said, uh, Terry, you know, uh, uh, I was wondering if you can come in. Uh, oh, Dale, it was Dale, it was the secretary. I mm -hmm. uh, said, Terry, can you come in uh, into the city? Harry wants to talk to you. And I like, I'm, and I, I said, Dale, I, I'm working, you know. I'm, I got to get, I'm, I'm up on the roof. I'm putting the floor down. I, I said, uh, you know, give Harry the address. If he wants to talk to me, he can shoot out and I'll show him the project. And she said, well, just a minute. Puts Harry on the phone. He says, uh, "Terry, the reason I wanted to talk to you is we're gonna we're thinking of retiring your number." And I said, "Okay, I'll be right in." <laughs> in 1972, I came to Boston determined to become part of another great team, the Boston Bruins. And I can honestly say that I gave everything that I had to the Boston Bruins organization. hockey for you people and this will always be my home good night everybody outside the fame is brought to you by cna stores a veteran owned business